Hello, friends. Welcome to Science Talk. I'm your host, Jim Massa. Okay. In an article that appeared on the online uh, newsletter, The Energy Mix, Buried Science shows fast carbon cuts can stabilize temperatures in three to four years. Okay. There's still time for decisive actions that would stabilize global temperatures over a span of three or four years rather than three or four decades. But only if countries move swiftly to bring greenhouse gas emissions to zero. Two senior climate scientists said during a webinar hosted by the Covering Climate Now News Collaborative. The gist of this largely unknown science is that contrary to long-held assumptions, large amounts of temperature rise are not necessarily locked into the Earth's climate system, said CC Now co-founder executive director Mark Hertzgard. As soon as the emissions are cut to zero, temperature rise can stop in as little as three years. Three years, not the 30 to 40 years that almost all of us journalists thought was the scientific consensus. Okay. Here's my thought about that paragraph. Bullshit! And as we go through this article here, this whole, there's so many things wrong here. For, you know, there's just of largely unknown science. So if it's so great, how come we don't haven't heard about it for where is the publications in the peer reviewed journal? And oh, it's not necessarily locked in the Earth's climate system. We've got feedback loops kicking in. Oh, and there's the thing called the oceans and the ocean heat content. 240 zettajoules just you mean took like 25% of that. That's just waiting to diffuse into the atmosphere that will Guarantee a three to four degrees C rise. Who is he trying to kid here? You know, and as soon as we stop, he's, he's, he's forgetting the oceans. And even his 30, 40 years business is a load of crap. That means humanity can still limit temperature rise to the 1.5 degree target. No. No, no, no. We're already locked in a trajectory of 5 to 11 C. Sorry, that's, that's what the good, you know, that, that's what good science determines based on physics, based on laws of thermodynamics. The science behind that conclusion dates back more than a decade, but didn't fully penetrate into the scientific community until more recently. That's because it's a load of crap. Oh, and look who says this. Pennsylvania State University climatologist Michael Mann. Well, there's a shock. He, he's been putting forth this notion that, oh, we can still keep things under 1.5 C. He's ignoring the ocean. He's ignoring thermodynamics. You cannot argue with physics, people. And the physics definitely tells us that we're, you know, in a 5 to 11 C trajectory, no matter what. It was reflected in the alarming science assessment published by the IPCC last August with its explanation of a near linear relationship between emissions and global warming and its calculation of global carbon budgets still available to keep warming below the 1.5 C threshold. Near linear? Are you kidding me? Once again, the IPCC keeps insisting on going with linear when everything is is exponentiating. What the hell's wrong with them? Oh, that's right. They get a lot of money from the Fossil Fuel Corporation. Now the IPCC is set to release a comprehensive climate impacts report for every 28, the one that just came out recently, which is actually extremely dire in uh, some of the things that they say in there. Man pointed to the limitation of global climate modeling to call for rapid action to reduce emissions in sharp contrast to the recent behavior of major government's financial institutions. With, 
With scientists still learning about key climate tipping points like ocean warming, the disintegration of the world's major ice sheets, and the pace at which large natural carbon stores are becoming sources, net sources of emission, we're not confident that we have all the relevant processes represented in the models, which speaks to the fact there's a lot of uncertainty. Uncertainty is not our friend here. Yeah, well, when you factor these things in here, you are not going to keep it to 1.5 C, dude. Goodness gracious. Yeah, we're learning about the ocean warming, and we're learning all the icy. And you know what? It's going to make things a hell of a lot worse. Man traced the, pros the prospect of stable temperatures within three or four years back to the science behind the carbon budget concept that surface temperatures are a function of cumulative carbon emissions over time and stabilize once carbon is no longer being burned. And the oceans have absorbed 240 zettajoule of energy that will diffuse into the atmosphere. WTF is wrong with you. We aren't com as committed to additional decades of warming as we thought we were, but we haven't really done a good job of unpacking the science behind that. So then how can you make that assertion? And yes, we are committed to decades of warming because you can't argue with physics. Past climate models show temperatures rising for decades after new carbon dioxide entered the system due to the massive amount of heat stored in the ocean and the time it would take for ocean and the atmosphere to reach equilibrium. Um, if you have a net outflux of heat from the ocean to the atmosphere, it's going to keep fluxing outward because you know, it's like anything else. You follow the gradient. And as long as you keep putting out that heat, there's not going to be an equilibrium with the uh, atmosphere and the oceans being reached for millennia at least. The models missed a piece of the puzzle. When new CO2 emissions stop, the balancing between ocean and atmosphere continues while the oceans and other natural sinks continuing, continue pulling carbon out of the atmosphere. Wrong! The oceans have heated up. Gas solubility decreases with increased water temperature. So this is just reflects a total lack of understanding of a simple principle of science. So that is just complete. That's just poor science to say that thing. And to say th those two things are equal and opposite. No, wrong, 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 wrong. If you stop emitting carbon, surface temperatures stabilize within a few years. No, again, I sound like a broken record here, but how many times do I have to say that, you know, the, the ocean heat, and let's not forget, we're warming the atmosphere. And we're going to still be releasing all this methane, which is going to drive up the warming even more so. Is he, He's obviously forgetting about that. Then he tries to use this faucet uh, uh, drain analogy, which is, I think, silly. You know, uh, the drain is natural sinks, and the, the that really is the crux of the carbon cycle dynamics. It's more than just carbon cycle; it's latent heat energy, it's thermal dynamics. As with any scientific result, there are caveats. Continued ocean warming destabilizes ice shelves at a time when the U.S. Uh, NOAA is already projecting one foot or zero point three meters of sea level rise in the next 30 years. Probably it will be much more than that, most likely. Again, it depends on this precise, specific location. And a combination of warming, dry deforestation, thawing of permafrost, ocean heat, releasing methane from the shelves, in reasons like the Amazon, could turn a major carbon absorber or sink into a new source of emission. It's already happening. While those risks are built in the carbon global carbon model, there's potential for a lot of uncertainty. Well, I think you need to look at different models there, uh, Professor Mann. And he goes on to say, oh, we might have more, uh, we've got more time than we may have realized to do something. No, we don't. And be quite honest, as I pointed out, 1995 was the tipping point for the planet. It already is too late. We've already locked things in. 
That's the reality. And then he goes, uh, uh, so Salamul Hook, Huck. I, I apologies for not knowing the correct pronunciation. He's the director of the International Center for Climate Change Development in Bangladesh. His country is one of the biggest victims of the 1.1. Oh, now, now it's down to 1.1 instead of 1.2. Okay, that's good. So if anyone has a right to be doom and gloom, it is us, but we're not. Hmm. He said, you know, there's 170 million people living close to two of the world's largest rivers and regularly subjected to flooding and cyclone. He said the country is leading the world in a form of locally led adaptation with one of the highest levels of cl public climate awareness anywhere. Okay, fine. But, you know, you, you have to present the complete picture. Well, while no country anywhere is more vulnerable to rising seas than Bangladesh, Huck said, the immediate rise depend the immediate risk, excuse me, depends on location. If the land is stable, you get a certain amount of sea level rise. If the land is subsiding, you get an additional increase in salinity. So that species that can stand the change are now more likely to survive in a country's mangrove forest. Rice farmers now willingly pay a premium for salt resistant varieties developed by the Bangladeshi scientists. He goes on to say that, you know, they're adapting as best as they can. It, he does say there is a certain point where adaptation and being able to cope will not be able to take place and people will have to move. Translation, climate refugees will happen. So now this unburying the science during his webinar, what is this very important science showing the potential to quickly stabilize global temperatures was buried when the IPCC released its working group report last August. And he said the missing signal went back to the way its climate scientists communicate. Sometimes we don't necessarily connect the dots. The good scientists do. We can jump from point A to point B based on the scientific knowledge and expertise, so we skip steps and sometimes we don't show our work. Um, that's what the peer review process is for. In, the, in a section called, I don't know, methodology? So that, that's just, that, that's just hand-waving. That's just making excuses for shoddy scientific work. Sorry, it just is. I mean, look at the papers I have shared with you when I do the deep dive into, into peer review papers where it's extremely detailed. That's good science. Hershkot says scientists don't always realize what other people don't know. Okay, that's true. You know, we do tend to be, you know, in our own little bubbles there. But that journalists share responsibility for getting those stories told. Well, the problem is lots of times journalists are not well versed enough in the science. You know, let's face it, it might be scientifically illiterate that they're not able to adequately explain what's happening. And they go on to say, we're not necessarily doing that for all. Yeah, we are. That, that's, that's just, uh, you know, you know, doing the hopium, uh, you know, hits, whatever. So um, I wanted to, 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 to do this segment here just to show you what bullshit looks like. This is bullshit. And the fact that the article features this guy here is, uh, well, I can't say I'm surprised. He's become a cheerleader. Makes me wonder if he's, well, not necessarily, without knowing for sure, makes me wonder if he's being bought out by uh, corporate interest. Let's put it that way. So the point is, folks, we have all these positive feedback loops kicking in. We have all this ocean energy stored. Places that were sources are now be, uh, places that were sinks are now becoming sources. And we're locked into a trajectory of 5 to 11 C. That's that's what the physics tells us. That's what the unbiased and analyses tells us. That's just it, this is just wishful thinking. I'm sorry to say, and there's just a lot of oh surprise, surprise! Look, there's this science that oh it just happened to magically appear. Really? Come on.
As I said, if that's the case, then this is shit science being done. You know, it's a shit science with whatever models they're working with. The models that, you know, that I look at are the ones that are done extremely well, etc. So, um, don't believe this. That's, that's my, that's my bottom line. Don't believe this. All right. Well, uh, kind of ripped into this one a wee bit, but it, it had to be ripped into. So, um. Until next time, we'll talk soon. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.